Have you, like me, been wondering how the hell BYD are coming out with so many damn models, a model every week, every second week, different cars, different different tri- drive trains, different types of EVs, plug-in hybrids, new battery technology. How the hell are they doing this? Well, there is one very good reason for how they're doing this. And if you look at the details, it shows that BYD are probably going to extend their lead. They're not going to be standing still. At this point, BYD is probably about making around the fourth or fifth most cars in the world. But it's very likely, considering what they're doing, they're going to jump to first place within the space of maybe five or six years. Now, yes, Geely, I believe, are following BYD and will race up the sales charts as well. But let's have a look at the numbers here of what exactly is going on and why BYD are able to do what exactly they're doing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. I'll be at the Melbourne EV Auto Show on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of June. Would love to see you there. I'll put a link in the description. Get some tickets. Come along. It's going to be great. A friend of mine sent me this chart that he's put together, and it shows you uh, just how exactly BYD have been able to do what they've done over the past four years. I mean, going from making 400,000 cars a year about four years ago, 400,000. To this year, probably 6 million based on where their trajectory is. If not, 5.5 million. That's insane. So looking at the number of employees per company, you can see the different companies that are, um, you know, that are why they're able to innovate so much faster. And it does seem to me that more employees enable companies to do more. So BYD in first place, And they're in first place with the number of global employees they actually have. Not just with the number of employees working on a production line, which is miles ahead. Let's have a look at that first. That is 970,000. 970,000, which is well ahead of second place, Volkswagen Group, and is nearly three times as many staff as what Toyota has, which is insane. Toyota are making, what, 10 million cars a year. They have 370,000 staff. BYD have 970,000 staff on a number of 4.3 million. But what is really enabling BYD to jump ahead is their R&D employees and their research employees. So BYD has 104,000 R&D employees and 70 to 90,000 EV research employees. Numbers are staggering. Whereas Toyota has 8,000 to 15,000 EV research employees, a tiny fraction of BYDs, and 30 to 45,000 R&D employees, which is less than half of what BYD have. Now, if you've got less than half of the number of employees working in R&D, how quickly is your R&D gonna go forwards, right? Maybe there's a good reason why Toyota are planning on using BYD's hybrid technology in their hybrids. Anyhow, the other thing here in this chart you can see is that around 41% of the cars that BYD sell are fully electric, around 59% are plug-in hybrids. So having all those staff working in EV development, plug-in hybrid development has enabled them to actually make those numbers of vehicles and still make a profit. Unlike Volkswagen Group, uh, Toyota, all the other car manufacturers in this list, as far as we know, are Hyundai, Stellantis, Honda, Ford, General Motors, BMW. Unlike these guys, um, BYD actually does make a profit on their EVs. So that's a big difference. So second place, the Volkswagen Group, they have 660,000 global employees, nearly double that of Toyota. You can really see why the Volkswagen Group is burning through cash. And they, their CFO, Chief Financial Officer, said the roof is on fire. And they're having to cut costs, close down factories in Germany. Really, the biggest issue here for the Volkswagen Group is they have so many staff in Germany and staff are expensive in Germany and factories in Germany as well. And yeah, they're not efficient, that's for sure. But as you can see here, the Volkswagen Group has a lot more employees in working in R&D than Toyota does with 60 to 80,000, but not that many in the EV development sector with 15 to 25,000. Next, let's have a look at Toyota, 370,000 plus employees and 
as you know, Toyota makes around 10 million cars a year, 10 and a half million last year. Yeah, I mean, it's surprising to see their employee numbers are so much lower than the Volkswagen Group and BYD, especially in that R&D sector. Next is the Hyundai Motor Group. They sold around 7 million cars last year and they have 280,000 staff and 25,000 to 35,000 working in R&D. Stellantis is next, 272,000 staff on around 6.8 million sales, 20 to 30,000 in R&D. Honda, 177,000 staff on 3.8 million sales. And, you know, that's good. Ford, let's look to further down the list. Ford, 171,000 staff on 2 million sales. Maybe they have a few too many staff considering their sales numbers. But anyway, you can see their list here, R&D. Quite a few people working in R&D, 15 to 25,000 based on only 2 million sales. General Motors seem to be a bit more efficient than Ford. Their sales are higher at 2.7 million and they have 162,000 employees. So they have less staff and they're actually selling more cars and producing more cars. Similar R&D numbers with EVs and just R&D overall. Now looking down this list, you can see BMW, similar numbers, 20 to 30,000 in R&D. 2.4 million sales on 150,000 staff. Next is, though, is quite an interesting one at Tesla. Tesla has 140,000 staff worldwide and they sold 1.8 million cars last year. However, Tesla has a higher percentage of employees working in R&D, much higher percentage of employees working in EV R&D than any company except BYD. In fact, Tesla is second on this list and probably potentially second in the world with the number of employees working in EV R&D with up to 35,000. That number is absolutely enormous. Now, a lot of these staff working in Tesla's R&D numbers, you can see here 30 to 40,000, probably working in full self-driving, working on robo-taxi development, working on autonomy, and potentially even working on Tesla's bot. So not sure what numbers and percentages those are. I don't think anyone really knows. This is just a really good guess based on artificial intelligence, bringing together all the numbers and all the information that we currently have. But yeah, it is interesting to see here with Tesla's, the number of workers and employees they have working in R&D compared to the number of cars they're actually selling, it's very, very high. And this is the one shocking number here in this list. And it shows you why one of the reasons why Nissan is in trouble. It is, it is really an indictment on what's going on at the company why they're not innovating, why their cars are old, their vehicles are dated, and let's be honest, they haven't really evolved at all in the last 10 years. Nissan, 130 plus thousand staff, and they're firing 20,000, on 4.9 million sales last year. Actually, that number fell to around 4 million last year. And they have only 15 to 18,000 staff working in R&D, the smallest number on this list, even though their sales were actually fourth on this list. Plus, they have only 4,000 to 8,000 working on EVs. But their R&D numbers were much smaller than everyone else on this list, even though their sales were higher than almost all the other car manufacturers, except for a couple. That shows you, I think, that R&D staff are exceptionally important. We haven't yet got to that period in time where artificial intelligence can just press a button and it can do it all for you. You still need staff. So if Nissan has less R&D staff, and less staff working uh, basically per, per vehicle sold than any other company in the world right now, as far as we can tell from this list, any other big company, and they're about to fire another 20,000. What does that tell you about their future? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Bye-bye.